hey, Ellen, pull yourself together already. It's time to feast. Sit down at the table with Andrew Ryan and Ellen Chu on Feast Meets West. Hello, welcome to the feast, and this is Ellen Chu, and this is Andrew Ryan. Hello, today we are gonna be, well, doctors. Oh, we are no. curing what ails everyone. The name of the show is "Curing What Ails You." However, no. we can't be, we can't say we're doctors, Ellen Chu. We're gonna get in so much trouble. We can't say no. We're no? not real doctors. <laughs> okay. I feel the lawsuits coming in right away. Pretend, I said. Right, pretend. So we're going to pl- play, play doctor. Play the role. That sounds like something we don't want to do <laughs> okay. either. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, we will be sharing like, you know, very well supported facts with you. Well, now see, we don't want to say that either. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's do a little disclaimer right okay. now. Public service announcement. Anything that we say in today's program may or may not be real. Okay. <laughs> We should just put that on the front of every program we do. I think so, too. Yes. Because, you know, these are informations that we acquire, but, you know, they may change mm. tomorrow. Take, a, take it with a grain of salt, not literal grain of salt, a figurative grain of salt. Okay, we're just making this whole thing like, you know... No, we're not making it up either. I mean, I mean we're scaring people. People are no. like, you know, I tried things that you guys said, and now you're telling me that there will no. be consequences? I will tell you, we are not talking about any medicine in our show that is over the counter. Oh, wait, no, that sounds bad. <laughs> <That's> bad. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is we are not featuring any like Western medicine or any brands of medicine. We are not promoting any medicines. However, we are talking about a very interesting Chinese remedy. Right. And this remedy has been written up by the New York Times. No, the Wall Street Journal. Okay. <laughs> Why would Wall Street Journal <laughs> Giving... talking about stocks Pe- and talking about the exchange and now they're talking about Chinese remedies? No, they do more than that, Ellen Chu. <laughs> I read the Wall Street Journal. See, look at you. You're starting off the show with fake news. You're saying okay. it's the wrong media outfit but i want to say okay so basically what happened is is like a week or so ago Mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago the wall street journal wrote about this chinese cough remedy Mm -hmm. and then i saw it on twitter and all my asian american friends were like oh yeah the western media the white people they have columbus our chinese syrup and that that means that they so-called quote-unquote discovered like chinese cough syrup Mm-hmm. Whereas Chinese people have known about this for like over a hundred years, I think right? Every Chinese family has a bottle of this. Every Chinese family has a bottle. Right. Every person Even in Taiwan has one. Even when I lived around the world, you know, we had a bottle in my house. It, it's like it, every time we cough, my mom and dad would just bring out that dark bottle. Syrup. Yep. Syrup. But I liked it. Yeah, it's yeah, not bad. It's not bad. And actually, even Andrew Ryan, who's lived in Taiwan for 20 years, n- has known about this for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So do you want to say what the name of this is? Pi Pa Gao. Pi Pa Gao. Mm-hmm. And Pi Pa means loquat. Loquat. So it's a little yellow fruit. Yes. Furry fruit. And Gao is in a thick, you know... Paste. Paste, Or yeah. syrup, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but there is a, a specific brand um, that they talked about in the Wall Street Journal. It's a very long name. So yeah. usually you just say Pipa Gao. Mm-hmm. But we're going to tell you all about this Chinese remedy. And we also want to say that it's you don't have to, you know, get did, the that one brand. Like there are many brands, right? That the real thing that cures your cough is not the Pipa Gao. What is it? It's the Tranpei. <gasps> so you got the whole story wrong. So trembe is a kind of Chinese herb mm-hmm. that goes into the pea pakal. Right. So the pea pakal actually is to make the trembe taste better. Oh, so they put the loquats in it to make it taste better. Right. It soothes you too. Yeah. But actually the trembe is that calms you. Really? So... When you, it's you know, a relaxer. There, there, there is a famous brand in Taiwan, you know, that you have to. It's on Xing Yi Road. Yeah. It's like 500 NT per bottle. 20 US dollars per bottle. Right. Yeah. So basically, what they do is that they have a pack of white powder uh-huh. that they put over the pea, the pea pakal 
a pack of white powder. And what does yeah. the white powder do? And then it's like once you bring it home, they ask you to stir it inside. Oh, and that packet is the chuan bei. It's the chuan bei. So a lot oh. of the Western doctors actually was suspicious. Uh -huh. Thinking that it must be some kind of illegal powder. Oh. So a lot of the doctors here in Taiwan took the white powder uh -huh. and they went to a lab and tried to find out what is it? You know, what is the secret of this this specific bottle of pipa gao? Why yes. does it cure all of the... Because a lot of doctors use it themselves too. Yeah, right. And they found out it's just chuan bei. It's just this one thing. I actually have the right. name of Trembe in English. It's called fritillary bulb, or the I guess the Latin name is bulbus fritillariae mm -hmm. cirrhosi. <laughs> I hope Trembe. you all get it, okay? Okay, so okay. yes, you can look it up on Wikipedia. They have the list of all so the ingredients in there. Fritillary bulb, okay? It's bulbus fritillaria. Sir Jose. Okay. Okay. It sounds like cirrhosis. So, Ooh. right. So that is the main ingredient that really calms down. All right. Well, thanks for that, Ellen Chi. We don't have to do the rest of the show. Yay! Right, yay! No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm anyway, kidding. so basically the brand that is like viral throughout the world is mm. the Nian Ci An Jing Du Chuan Pei Pi Pa Gao. Mm -hmm. That one is actually, it has a story to the brand. Well, we're not going to get into that yet. Okay. Don't, don't skip straight to the juicy bit, Ellen Chu. I thought Chu. we're going to finish everything in one no. segment. <laughs> Okay. And then play music for the rest of the okay. 30 minutes. We're going to check the menu. All right, let's check the menu. Okay. That's a good idea. In our first chorus, we kick things off with that Wall Street Journal's discovery of the ancient remedy that Chinese people have known about for more than 100 years. We're going to tell you how it's made and what it is used for. Mm hmm. So, second chorus, we'll be sampling the remedy, which is popular among radio people and anybody who uses their voice. For their jaw. Plus, we'll tell you about some crazy ways that people mix the syrup into foods. Oh my goodness. And in our third and final course in today's edition of Give It a Chai, Kirthi Sridharan finds out how Indian cuisine also has a rich tradition of serving up food that can cure what ails you. Wow. Mm. Interesting. And first song we will be sharing with you is I've Still Got My Health. And it's by Bette Midler. I'm always a flop at a top-notch affair, but I still got my health, so what do I care? First course. Okay, we're back in our first course today, and today we're talking about loquat syrup, that ancient Chinese remedy. Uh, and we have some amazing facts about this. If you read that article in the Wall Street Journal, which was entitled, Herbal Supplement Has Some New Yorkers Talking Instead of Coughing. Mm. Well, we've got the history, and we're going to tell you about the close connection to filial piety and how much money they make and, and what's inside that amazing syrup. Wow. Other than Chuan Bei. Yes. All right. So let's start off with the history. Apparently, Pipa Gao, this uh, loquat syrup, was created by Dr. Ip. Tin Si, a Qing Dynasty physician born in about 1880. Mm -hmm. And it was at Yangjing, a county commander asked Dr. Yip to treat his mother's persistent cough. And they were so impressed that they created a factory to mass produce it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 1946, the Yang family then sold the business to Tsai Sui Bong, a medicine practitioner who founded the Ninjong Medicine Manufactory. And the company was formally incorporated in 1962 and the products has been viral and sold worldwide that's right and filial piety if you look at the name of this particular brand it has the words mm -hmm. which means it's dedicated to the mother or in memory of the mother that's that's pretty sweet i think mm -hmm. and it makes lots of money like pipa gao had annual sales of 350 million hong kong dollars in 2014, that is a lot. That's a ton of moolah. So I guess, you know, the original family must kind of felt bad that they sold it in 1946, <laughs> right? It's like, what were we thinking? I know. So what's interesting is, is that um, there was a study at the China Academy of Traditional Chinese Medicine published in 1994. Um, and it says that 
the pipa gao had significant cough relieving and sputum removing effects. Uh, and in four acute or subacute inflammatory models, the in- anti-inflammatory effect was marked. So thank you to Wikipedia for sharing that information with us. Wow. But I would suggest you go straight to the source. Exactly. So what's it made of? 15 different ingredients. And we did mention about trambe, which is the fritillary bulb and yep. also loquat leaf mm-hmm. and lady bell root. Indian and, bread. Wow. These are all different kinds of like Chinese medicine, Pomelo right? peels. Yep. Chinese, Chinese bell, bell flower. flower. Root. Okay. Yes. And um, Panelia rhizomy. Oh, Ellen Chu. I don't know if we want to go through all these. Okay. Let's skip down um, past the ones that we can't pronounce. So it has methylene, a syrup, and honey base. Yes. So the honey base is basically what makes it nice and sweet. And mm-hmm. I think it gets its flavor from the loquat leaves and also from apricot kernels and from... Uh, the pomelo peel. Mm. So what? What is? Do you want to describe what this tastes like, Ellen Chu? Well, so it has like a syrup consistency, mm-hmm. and basically it's kind of like honey mm-hmm. uh, blended with loqua. Loquat leaves, right? Right. So, and what is the flavor of loquat leaves? It's kind of like. Is it like the loquat fruit? It is. And similar. Uh-huh, similar to it. Slightly more and bitter. Yeah, stringent. A little bit bitter. That's why when you have the honey, it covers the bitterness. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is actually when we come back in just a moment in our second course, we're going to tell you some crazy ways in which it's used as food, but we're also going to be sampling it here in the studio. Really? Yes. Do you ever use um, this when you're going out for events, like if you have to host or if you have to do something important with your voice? Uh, yes, like ear and parties when mm. I really strain my voices. Mm. I usually put hot water. How many water. voices do you have, Ellen Chu? A <laughs> uh, voice. And, you know, I use like a spoon uh-huh. and basically I add hot water to it and I drink it. And it really soothes your, you know, throat. Mm. And also, you know, we were mentioning before a certain brand of it, but there are actually many different brands. And I have heard, I've actually been chastised for not going to an actual Chinese medicine doctor and having the formula that they mix Mm -hmm. there on the premises Mm -hmm. because when you actually go to a chinese medicine shop they will take all of the individual herbs Mm -hmm. and they'll brew it together Mm -hmm. and they'll they you have to cook it down it takes like i think four hours to cook it down into Mm -hmm. a syrup Mm -hmm. so it's um reduced um and that way it's even fresher and probably the ingredients are more active than if it's packaged exactly it could be expensive though you're saying twenty dollars for a bottle Mm mm-hmm Holy cow. I saw on the internet, this is crazy. Uh, it can go for as much as 70 US dollars if you buy it online in the States. Wow. Crazy, right? Crazy. Don't spend that much. Right. Not, not needed. But a lot of Western musicians are now using it. Uh, people like Jason Mraz will use it. And right. I've seen reports of other big stars that are using it. Wow. So they finally discovered what we've known for a long time. I think so. A long the time. secret of the ancient Chinese. I'm telling you, if the Wall Street Journal, your throat. you want to come and find us, we'll tell you all these secrets that we already know. I think, you know, they are going up in the market and mm. they're going to be having their own stocks. Oh, maybe that's the connection. Yeah. Or else why would Wall Street Journal report this? Well, it's an interesting thing oh. that actually a lot of white that's people don't know. That's in the market. Know. Yes. Right? Yes. Maybe they are setting up to be in the stock exchange. Oh. Conspiracy theory. You heard it here first. <laughs> exactly. So if they really become a stock, you mm. know it. And I know it. Ellen, you called it. Yeah. Again, Econ major. Again, take everything we say with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another song here. This is by Angel Chen Sihan. Mm-hmm. And it's called I Jian Kang. So I love... I love health. Health, but it could okay. also be I am healthy. Yeah. Because it's the English letter I. I, Jian Kang, well, yes. Could be anyway. Could be anything. Ah, uh, yeah. So when we come back in just a moment, I'm going to give you three scenarios, Alan Chu. I'm going to tell you about three foods, and I want you to give me your honest feedback. Okay. These are foods that use this loquat leaf syrup. I can't imagine. Because <laughs> it's a medicine. I know. Okay. So we're going to sample it, and then I'm going to tell you about these three different foods, and we're going right. to give it a yay or a nay. Okay. All right. Back in a moment when the feast continues. This is Victoria. From the London Underground <laughs> to the Taipei Metro. 
The people of our world are going places. Are you listening? Tune in to the sounds of your world on Radio Taiwan International. Second course. Okay, so uh, we're back now on Feast Meets West, and we're talking about Pi Pa Gao, which is loquat syrup, loquat mm -hmm. leaf syrup, that Chinese remedy that will take your cough away. I have some here in the studio. I'm just going to pour up a little bit for Ellen, a little bit for me. And these are, it's an herbal mixture, so it's not medicine in the Western medicine sense. Ooh, it smells nice. So I'll just pour a little bit for you, pour a little bit for me. And basically what I did is I took a big spoonful, a heaping spoonful, and I added it to a mug of hot water. Mm. How does it taste, Ellen Chu? I like it because usually when I do hosting a lot, you know, when I don't feel comfortable in my throat, mm. I drink it. I like it. Mm. <sighs> it does taste nice, Ellen Chu. It has that kind of like peppermint. Taste? I think it is mint. They put uh -huh. mint leaves in it. Mm -hmm. So it has a little bit of a cooling effect mm -hmm. when you drink it down. And unlike a lot of really strong Chinese herbs, it actually tastes like quite flavorful and... Because it has the honey syrup in there. The honey and it it's not offensive. It's not mm -hmm. an offensive flavor. Mm -hmm. Even like some of the soups, like the Chinese herbal soups can be a little bit much. Yeah, but this is okay. This mm. is like one of the Chinese remedy, medicine remedies that I really enjoy that I can drink all day and not feel that it is a medicine. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to describe to you three different mm -hmm. food items that people have used this pi pa gao in. And I want our listeners at home to kind of imagine this as well as we describe it. Okay, go. So starting in November last year, a coffee store chain started to make a drink using espresso and pipa gal, this syrup, and they make a loquat leaf syrup latte. That's kind of gross. <laughs> Coffee added to it? I can't imagine. So I don't know if like, is the coffee flavor stronger or is the syrup flavor stronger? You know, this is like something I can't really accept like soy milk with coffee. Yeah. No. Don't put weird stuff in our coffee. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. So that's something that I cannot take. And so when I hear pipa gal and you mix it with my coffee. Yeah. Nuh-uh. So -uh. we're both going to give it a big old... Okay. Okay, moving right along. The second one is a dessert. Okay. Okay. So what they do is they take this uh, dessert, and apparently at the World Gourmet Summit in 2007, a foodie interviewed by the Sunday Times in 2008, Dr. Diana Tan said um, that she had a meal by Chef Jeremy Leung, and this is what she said, quote, I especially liked the dessert, which was a steamed pear served with ice cream and it came with pipa gao the chinese herbal cough syrup and almond cream and the contrast of warm and cold created the most delightful sensations on my taste buds i think this would work because peppermint and ice cream mix and honey and ice cream mix so these things all blend together and it seems like a like a reduced sweet sauce that right. would actually so add it's something like a syrup you know a warm syrup that goes over the ice cream I buy it. I buy it. Yay! Yes. Yay. Okay. So we have a third one here. Okay. Ellen Chu. This is a cocktail that includes uh, pipa gao, and it's called the Hulk Smash, and this comes to us via Kindred Cocktails. So what you do is you take two ounces of bourbon or brandy, two-thirds of an ounce of this pipa gao syrup, a third of an ounce of warm water, a half of a lime quartered, uh, a sprig of mint, and then a dash of bitters. And so what you do is you uh, stir the, uh, the syrup in the water to make it runny. Mm -hmm. Then you add lime and you muddle it. So you use one of those little muddlers, mm -hmm. a wooden thingy. And then you add bourbon, two mint sprigs, and bitters if you're using it. And then you shake it, strain it, and put ice in it. And then you garnish it with the remaining mint. So this would have a kind of a slightly bitter, slightly sweet, 
a kick of the alcohol from the bourbon and then the mint leaves would give it a like the cooling uh taste as well and then some sourness from the lemon or lime but you know what pipa mm. gao does taste like bourbon adding lime mint <laughs> And bitters. So what would it do to it? I think it would add the extra complexity thickness. of the, the thickness and the, the like the Chinese medicinal side right. of it. I, I think it I would think be I pretty buy good. It. Yeah, yeah, I would buy it because it blends. Okay, so we give this one a mm -hmm. thumbs Yay! up. Yay, so two out of three. That's it's not just bad. a coffee that I cannot no, take. I'm not buying it. Like, you know, just think of loqua mm -hmm. inside coffee Ish. now. Mm. I was just dump it. I just almost wanted to like throw up a little exactly. in my mouth. Exactly. And Ugh. it has like latte milk in there. Ugh. <laughs> okay. Milk and like pea gala does not go together. No. I just want to put that out no. there. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into another song. And this song is called... Health. And it's by... Falan Dai Le Tuan Friend Day. No, Falan Dai Yue Tuan. Yue Tuan, okay. <laughs> I lost my Chinese. I know, it's okay. Okay. I stole Fran it from you. <laughs> All right, so we'll be back in just a moment. And when we come back in our Feast Meets West third course, we're going to give you Give It a Try Part 2. Give It a Try. And Kirthi Sridharan is going to be going to an Indian restaurant and finding out how Indian cuisine can also offer some curative effects. Okay. Third course. Rogan Josh, Lamb Sog, Biryani, all of these are grouped into one delicious category, Indian food. But Rogan Josh is a Kashmiri lamb dish of Persian origin. The word sag, meaning spinach, is Punjabi, and biryani, the ever-popular seasoned dish of rice and meat, is said to have roots in Hyderabad. A food being labeled Indian can mean a lot of things, but what does it mean in Taipei? I'm Kirti Shilaran, and here in this four-part mini-series called Give It a Chai, that's spelled C-H-A-I, I'm determined to give you an answer. In sickness and in health, it's a common phrase in wedding vows. That's what you want from a meaningful bond like marriage, right? Someone who sticks with you through the good and the bad, someone who makes you feel better when you're down. According to A.K. Prasanan, owner of Amma's Kitchen, a plate of authentic South Indian cuisine cooked with love is not only the faithful partner you've been looking for, it could even cure what ails you. As you know, uh, in Tamil there is one, uh, one word, food is medicine, medicine is food. So whatever we have some problem, we never go to, uh, in, in my age, uh, in my age, we, I never go to the doctor. Always my mom, she, she doing everything in the homemade only. I, for example, if I have cough, just the ginger uh, pepper soup, they will be prepared. We exchange our mother's home remedies over chai and a ghee roast dosa, a paper-thin crispy rice pancake cooked in clarified butter or ghee. It's arguably the star of South Indian cuisine. At The Million myself, I grew up on glasses of warmed turmeric and pepper milk for upset stomachs and spoonfuls of honey and cinnamon for sore throats. These recipes are revered and passed down as methodically as the ones for ghee roasts and biryani. The restaurant itself is cozy. I sit at one of four or five colorful tables crowded into a tiny space with traditional cloth lanterns hanging overhead. Tucked in a second-floor alcove right by the Taipower MRT station in central Taipei, Amma's Kitchen is the first of its kind, an eatery featuring an all-South Indian menu, virtually unheard of in Taipei. I speak to Prasannan about how his food philosophy, one of healing and self-betterment, led to the formation of Amma's Kitchen. If we open the restaurant, means I can keep clearly these are the materials I can use in our food. These are materials will be effective in your body to compromise your body level, like even sugar content and blood pressure content. Everything we can control within our food. In other words, if you know that everything you're eating has been made with ingredients that are good for you, the food you eat is bound to make you a healthier, happier person. There are many spices there. Every spice is having the unique uh, uh, properties. Not only for taste, it should be like a biological molecule. Since I am the chemistry guy, I know what are the uh, main components into the materials. For example, tamarind. 
curcumin there is one material that curcumin how it will fight for the cancer that similarly uh, cumin what is there and pepper what are the materials there you have a chemical name i know that chemical name how to fight the in the human body things like tamarind cumin ginger and pepper are standard ingredients in any south indian meal and all of them have been proven to have immune boosting properties they're also all incredibly flavorful and unique in their own right which doesn't hurt either his most popular dish is one that many south indians grew up eating as well one day at least five customers were coming for masala dosa and idli idlis savory steamed rice cakes the size of your palm are made in a process similar to steamed dumplings or rice buns found in taiwanese cuisine Prasannan's goal was to create a restaurant where the food is made with as much love and care as your mother's cooking. The amma in the restaurant name, of course, is the Tamil word for mother. My feeling is realized by my mom. That means whatever whatever I need, my mom can prepare. And that's definitely something the people of Taiwan can sympathize with. Amma's Kitchen isn't a big name, high-end, top-of-the-line restaurant, but it is a place that makes you feel like you're home. So if you find yourself in central Taipei and in need of a warm plate of food that can cure more than just your hunger, stop by Amma's Kitchen to give it a try. Next week, join me for an interview with a restaurant owner who says that there are really only two differences between Indian and Taiwanese cuisine: spice and salt. For give it a try, I'm Kirthi Shidharan. Okay, I hope everyone feels comfortable, you know, especially with us drinking the pipa gall, but you know, you guys are listening to it. Well, you know, these are traditional Chinese remedies and that's been going on for hundreds of years and yes. I like it. I like it too. Mm-hmm. It's I've enjoyed this show. I think it was, I learned a lot in the process of it, exactly. didn't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you uh, enjoyed today's program or would like to contact us, send us a letter at P.O. Box 123-199, Taipei, Taiwan. Email us at A-N-G-R-O-O at R-T-I dot O-R-G dot T-W. And next Saturday in the Feast, join us as we celebrate the vernal equinox. Oh, spring is coming! Yay! And we're okay. going to have some ways of inspiring happiness within others. Wow. Because and... it's also International Happiness Day. Great, but yes. we have to heal the world first. Okay, That's right. so one final song, and this is by Michael Jackson, "Heal the World." And this is Ellen Chu. And this is Andrew Ryan. Bye. Bye bye. There's a place in your heart, and I know.